Hey. <laughs> Let me turn on a map light here. I reckon y'all can see me. So I read through the, um, that little, uh, House of Representatives bill. And I also, um, watched Landshark's video about it. And, um, Shall Not Be Infringes video about it. And I've also seen Grey Wolf's videos about it. Now, Grey Wolf is a New Hampshire resident. And he has a carry permit. I think it's based on uh, like his community there. He's able to he's able to carry in his community by uh, by a sign off of the uh, constable or whoever their law enforcement person is or something. The reading of the bill is a bit interesting. It involves a um, an expansion of the duties of a, uh, of a federal entity, they're going to do a study on the, uh, over the course of a year on how it affects, um, the word wasn't crime, how it affects crime, but there was something about the effects that, that the Reciprocity Act has. Um, I think the points of, uh, shall not be infringed of him living right on the edge of a state where the next state over doesn't necessarily honor it, which I'm, I, I don't understand New Hampshire not honoring, um, other gun permits when they're kind of open, you know, it'd be like, well, Arizona didn't, um, and I'm not really sure what the circumstances are of, uh, one state, uh, honoring the permits of another state, like Florida and Georgia does, uh, does Georgia specifically say, okay, permit holders of Florida, da, da, da. I'm sure they do, but I don't understand or know what the circumstances brought about. Like, how do you get one state to go ahead and acknowledge the other one? This is the world we live in. Um, you aren't necessarily going to see a, a mass repeal of, uh, of gun regulations and I don't know I don't I don't care for the um, the expansion of a federal organization and I don't necessarily care for um, the wording that the uh, the representatives bill uses for um, each state will recognize the, um, the right to carry of another state. And to be honest, you know, states like Massachusetts and, um, Rhode Island may actually begin to just abolish it so as not to have any sort of issues. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the when you look at the benefits versus the consequences, it's a it's a rough call, and you can't necessarily um, predict what could happen that's so terrible. But um, whenever you read a bill or a new law, what you have to do is you have to imagine how it can be used in the worst possible case scenario. That is to say, you know how how the person of opposing arguments could use it to harm your position. And in the in the context of, of how I read that H twenty two, I think it puts it puts certain things into the per purview and into the ire of uh, of the gun control advocates. Not that not that it's one of those deals like, oh gosh, don't make waves and maybe they'll forget about this sort of thing. But mm -hmm. You just, you gotta be cautious whenever there's a new law. Um, the wording is simple. There's a couple things, I think it's in section one of it, that it's a little bit confusing to me. Um, I don't care for the, uh, destructive devices thing, and, um, and I don't care for the, uh, what is it, the... I don't necessarily have a problem with the, uh, uh, having an ID on you if you are concealed carry holding. 
in, in my state, if you are going to be carrying concealed, you have to have both your concealed permit as well as your um, identification. And because it's, um, it's illegal to carry concealed without a permit in the state of Florida, you know, that's, that's kind of cause for doing so. Now the laws that we have to be wary of are the ones that allow for um, open carry for permit holders. You know, the laws like that, they seem like a really good idea and a furthering of the, the gun rights. However, what they in effect do is they automatically, a person with a, uh, a, a open carried firearm will then have to provide identification if asked by law enforcement. And that's an invasion of privacy. I mean, there's a reason for due process and that, that reason has to do with, uh, you know, a person's innocent until proven guilty for a reason. You know, this, this is my country and, and it's your country and you don't need to be treated like a damn criminal in your own country. And it's a person who, who's in a place where they don't belong that gets asked, oh, show me, show me why you belong here. Show me why you should be able to do this thing that you're doing. That isn't what, what gives a person the ability to be great. It's, it's privacy and independence. But now plugging that into 822, um, I don't like the study, I don't like the program where it, where it takes a look at the adverse effects and um, I'm deeply concerned with, with how, uh, specifically Massachusetts, I don't, I don't think Rhode Island so much, but uh, you know, Massachusetts could be, could be pretty hardcore with this. And the people of Massachusetts and the people of, uh, of, of states such as that who support it, you know, the reason why people are supporting it is because they think they'll win out but you really got to look at the possibility of not winning out through this. And uh, there you go, man. That is, uh, that's it. Frankly, I think it's a slippery slope. Slippery slope, and if you look at it deep enough, it's a, another case of the... Uh, legislation trying to do the judicial branch's job again, which it's not their job. We have three branches of government for a goddamn reason. Pardon my language.